Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So, welcome back to today's training, right? So, here's the thing. As a Forex trader, one of the most pressing problems that you'll face is that there is just way so many different currency out there, different currencies. For example, let's say you want to buy the euro. But right now, that's the euro dollar, the euro Aussie, the euro New Zealand, the euro yen, the euro Swiss franc, my you. Which euro pairs do I trade, man? And I, I get it, right? There's just so many currency pairs out there. And you might be bullish on the euro, but there's so many flavor to choose from, right? Which euro flavor do you want to choose? The euro pound, the euro yen, the euro whatsoever. So this is where a currency strength meter comes into play. It makes your life easier to help you nail down, right? The right currency pairs to trade, depending on, on what you want to do, to ride a trend or to capture a swing. And we'll get to that later. Okay, so in today's video, right, here's what you'll learn, right? Number one, a mistake almost all traders make when using the currency strength meter and why you must avoid it. So this is something that many traders, they are not aware of. And I want to share with you what this is, right? Once you realize this, right, you'll never, you know, look at currency strength meter the same way again. Number two, how to use a currency strength meter to find high probability trading setups. Whether you want to ride a trend or whether you want to capture a swing, right, you can do it right with a currency strength meter to help you filter down the right currency pairs to trade. And I'll show you how to do it as well. And finally, right, how to build your own currency strength meter without knowing a single line of code and without spending a single cent. Ah, how do you do that? Right? So all this and more in today's training, right? You ready? Then let's get started. So first thing first, right? What is a currency strength meter? Right? So this is basically a tool, a tool or an indicator, whatever you want to call it, that tells you, right, which are the strongest or weakest currencies out there, right, according to the uh, time frame you're trading, of course, and I'll explain more later, but basically, it helps you identify the strong currency and the weak currencies in the market, and this is important, right, when you use a currency strength meter, I know that there's many third-party software tools out there, and many of you are, have probably, might even spend money on this currency strength meter provided by someone else. But here's the thing, right? You never want to use a currency strength meter if you do not know how it works. If you do not understand the formula behind it, if you do not understand the logic behind it, then you must never use the currency strength meter. Because here's the thing, right? For example, let's say you're a day trader, you trade off the five minutes time frame, and you purchase a currency strength meter. And since you do not know the logic or the formula behind it, the person who developed that currency strength meter, it might be meant for the higher time frame, like the daily or weekly time frame. So you can see that there is this incongruency over here. A short-term trader using a longer-term currency strength meter doesn't quite make sense. So this is why it's important to understand the logic, the formula behind every single currency strength meter. And don't worry, I'll show you how to create your own one so you never have to rely on a third-party source ever again. Okay, so this is important. It doesn't matter whether you're using currency strength meter or some random indicator, you must understand how it works, the logic behind it. First thing first, right? how do you create your own currency strength meter? So this is the fun part, right? So uh, you can do it in these simple steps. Number one, you want to create a list of major currency pairs. Okay, uh, I assume you know what they are. If you do not know, I'll share with you uh, some of the list of major currency pairs. Then you want to calculate the percentage change in price over the last 15 weeks. So why 15 weeks? All right, that's a good question. So according to numerous academic research, right? Momentum in the market right, tends to persist right, based on a look-back period anywhere, anywhere between the last 3 to 12 months. So in other words, right, if a market has been moving higher over the last 3 months, it tends to continue moving higher over time. All right, so that is a look-back period, the 3-month period. So anywhere between 3 months to 12 months, right, that is a fair uh, look-back period to reference to. So 15 weeks right, is about 3 months uh, period right, that we are looking as a look-back period, meaning how much did the price change over the last 3 months. And number three, you want to rank them right from the strongest currency to the weakest one. And number four, ideally, you want to do it on the weekends where the markets are closed. The numbers right, are static, meaning it won't change as the market you know, is open. So I usually do it on the weekends. And bear in mind, right, I usually trade off the four hour and the daily time frame. So the 15 weeks right, ROC, right, the percentage change in price over the last 15 weeks right, suits very well for me. So if you trade anywhere between the four hour and daily time frame, I would say right, the percentage change over the last 15 weeks right, is, a, is a nice sweet spot. So how do you do it? right? So first and foremost, let's do this. Get an Excel spreadsheet. right? You know, It's free. You can go to Google and get it. right? And what you want to do is to list down all the uh, major currency pairs. I just list down the, the most basic one, the dollar, the USD, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, yen dollar, and Swiss franc against the dollar. And one thing that you might have realized is that the uh, buy right is 
dollar Canadian, by right is uh, dollar yen. But because we want to make it right, base, I mean the, the second currency pair as dollar, I just pretty much, you know, use this uh, inverse one as well. And don't worry, if you use trading view, you can get those symbols as well. So let's see how to do it. Okay, so let me just remove this first. So first thing first, right, USD. Since USD is the currency that we are comparing against, it will always be zero. Okay, next thing, euro dollar. What is the percentage change in price of euro dollar over the last 15 weeks? And again, it's very simple. If you are using trading view, it's a free, uh, a free charting platform. Just type in here euro dollar. And I'll just click the first one. And what you want to do is just go down to the weekly time frame which we are at, go to indicators and look for ROC, rate of change. It stands for rate of change. Once you've inserted it, right, make sure you're on a weekly time frame. You just go to your settings and change it to over the last 15 weeks. Press OK. And what's going to happen is that the ROC indicator, indicator will give you a value. So in this case, the value is negative 2.17. How do I know that? Because, because it says so over here. Okay, so negative 2.17. You want to take that value and put it into your Excel spreadsheet. Negative 2.17. Simple. Not too difficult, right? So you do this for the other currency pairs as well. So let me do one more first. All right, let's do the pound dollar. So again, you go here. Look for pound dollar. Click the first one. I mean, whichever one you prefer. Then you look at the ROC value. For now, the pound dollar is negative 4.66. How do I know that? Because it says so it's over here. Duh. Okay, so negative 4.66. So I'm going to put in over here, negative 4.66. So I'm not going to do all, right? I mean, because it's all quite self-explanatory. So I've done this all ahead of time. And you can see over here, I've done the list, right? So you can see that right now, I've done all the different uh, major currency pairs, okay? And the uh, rate of change over the last 15 weeks. So now the next step to do is this, okay? So if you recall, you run the rank them from the strongest to the weakest. So it's very simple. Now we are back here. Ask yourself, at this point in time, right, which currency pair has the largest value? So if you look at this, the largest value seems to be the Swiss franc against the dollar. Oh yeah, just one thing. Let me backtrack one thing, right? So again, as I mentioned, right, you can actually just search for, you know, things like Swiss franc against the dollar, right? It will appear over here as well. You look for, let's say, the yen against the dollar. It will be there as well. So just click on this and then look at the rest. Bond, I mean, the respective ROC and, you know, fill it up accordingly. So anyway, to, back to where I was, all right? So which one is the strongest right now? Ask yourself. And from the looks of things, the Swiss franc against the dollar, that seems to be the strongest currency pair right now. So Swiss franc is the strongest. So I'll put in Swiss franc here first. Which number now is the second strongest? If you look at this, 0 0.9 is the strongest and that is the yen. Which is the third strongest? So from the looks of things, I think dollar is the third strongest because it's zero. Everything else after that is all negative something. Okay, so dollar is the third strongest, which is the fourth strongest. From the looks of things, it seems to be euro. The fifth one, it's possibly the British pound, followed by Canadian, Aussie, and New Zealand. There we have it, right? Ranking from the strongest all the way down to the weakest. So New Zealand, you can see over here, yeah, it has negative 9.18. So this is the weakest one, the smallest numbers because it has the largest negative value over here. Okay, negative 9.18. So this is how you rank from the strongest all the way down to the weakest. Simple. So now, we have our currency strength meter, you know, pretty much developed, right? We now know over the last 15 weeks, which are the strongest currencies. It's pretty much the Swiss franc, the yen, and the dollar. And the weaker ones are the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar. So now, moving on. Okay, um, I mean, do it on weekends, okay? So, I mean, you know that already. Moving on. How do you use this information that you have just created? So, you can do a couple of things. Number one, you can identify the strong trending markets and use it to, you know, to write trends because the, the markets, right, are in, already in strong trending mode. Or alternatively, you can identify weak trends or ranging markets, right, that allows you to capture a swing. So, here's how, right? First and foremost, how do you identify strong trends? All you need to do is to pair the top two strongest against the bottom two weaker. So you can, you know, go with any permutation that you want. So in this case, if you look at this again, you can see that uh, right now, Aussie seems to be one of the weaker ones, okay? And uh, dollar, pretty strong. Dollar, yen, or Swiss franc, they're all pretty strong. So let's say we go with Aussie against the yen. How about that? Okay, so I'm going to my charts. We look at the Aussie against the yen. Click on this. Let's see how this one is. 
So if you look at Aussie against the yen, you can see that right now this market is in a downtrend and that shouldn't be a surprise to you because you saw that earlier Aussie right was one of the weaker currencies out there and yen is one of the stronger ones. So from the looks of things, you can see that this market, this market, right? let me just remove this ROC for now. This market is in a downtrend. So my thought process now is that great. I want to look for selling opportunities, right? Because this, this market as of right now is in a nice downtrend. I can look for selling opportunities. So I don't go into, you know, trading setup and stuff like that because that's outside of today's trading. But briefly, what I will say is this, right? Is that I will look for the price to come into this area of value. Okay, let me just change this to, let's say, black color. Okay. So right now, if you just zoom out, you can see that the price has retested this level once, twice, thrice. And right now, you know, it broke here. Here could become a previous support which could act as resistance. Okay. So my top process now will be something like this. Okay. I know that according to the currency strength meter, this market is uh, I'm pairing a, a weak currency against a strong currency. And this is the area of value where previous support could become resistance. So one possible setup I could look at is for the price to show some form of price rejection at this area. So the price comes up, comes up, comes up, and then gets reje rejected strongly like this and closing near the lows. So this is what I call a bearish price rejection. And I can look to sell right, this market right, in anticipation of lower price to come. So there are a few factors here going for, right? Number one, the currency strength meter, we are pairing the strong, let's call it SAW, right? So, right? Strong against the weak. Number two, clearly this market is going to be in a downtrend because we are pairing a strong against the weak. Number three, we are looking for the price to come to an area of value. And number four, we look for a valid entry trigger, let's call it ET, right? Before we take any short position. Does it make sense? So let's do one more example, right? If we pair again, uh, let's say New Zealand, also one of the weakest one out there against the yen. Let's see how that looks like. So we look at New Zealand against the yen. Okay, so again, similar story. Let me just remove this line. This market right now, you can see that it's in a downtrend. I'm going to adopt the same principle, right? Identify my area of value. Okay, just zoom out, see how that level is, uh, is it being respected by the markets. Okay, I think so, I'll say somewhere here. Okay, so you can see that tested uh, once, twice, thrice, breakdown here could be previous support that could become resistance. Okay, so again, same thing, right? We could look for a possible price rejection at this area of value before taking a, a short trade, right? If the price comes up, comes up, gets rejected strongly, that could be a valid trading setup to look for uh, another wave, right, towards the downside. And since you know that you're pairing with a weak currency against a relatively strong one, you can, you know, trail your stop loss, right? To, you know, see how much uh, of the meat of the move you can capture, right? Maybe you can use a moving average. You can use a, a ATR indicator to trail your stop loss. Okay, so with that said, now that you have understand right how this works, let's move back to the slides. How do you identify weak trends or range? Okay, so that you can capture a swing. Well, this time around, what you want to do is to pair currencies, right, of similar strength or weakness. So if currency pairs, they, they are ranked pretty close to one another, right, you will expect that those markets to be in a, either in a weak trend or range market. So let's see an example. So if you look over here, Swiss franc against the yen pretty close right so if we pair them together here's what you'll get swiss franc against the yen so daily time frame let me just remove this line zoom out a little bit you can see that this market generally i would say it's in a range right a weak trend towards a range so again same concept applies right this is the area of value here here so if you want to trade this right i would say this is a good currency pair to you know to just look to capture one swing in the markets so I'll just pull it down lower somewhere here so a couple of ways we can trade this right so this market seems to be in a range we can look to buy low and sell high so if the price comes up higher higher and here this we can look for potential selling opportunities at this area of resistance maybe a false break setup where the price breaks above the highs then gets smacked down rejected you know closing back within the range that's one possibility another way we could look to buy as the price head back down into this area of support then gets you know smacked up closing back above the range that could be a potential buying opportunity. Okay, can you see how this works? So let's look at one more example, shall we? So again, this time around, let's say we pair the pound with the Aussie. Pretty close one another, right? So you, you won't really expect a strong trending market, right? So pound against the Aussie over here. You can see that uh, it's in an uptrend, right? But not exactly the strongest of uptrend. So for this case, 
where is the area of value okay now identify this uh this possible this level previous resistance that could become support support and this will be a potential area to look for buying opportunity so can you see how this currency strength meter works right when you pair the strong and the weak right chances are you'll get nice trending market if you pair currency pairs which are of similar strength or weakness you will probably get a weak trend or a range market so let me share with you a few bonus tips right before we end off today's video number one never use a currency strength meter to time your entries this tool is not meant to tell you when to buy or when to sell it's only help it's only meant to help you filter out potential trading opportunities all right and here's why i say that if you look back at the charts right aussie dollar at one point in time, you can imagine that the currency strength meter, right, will, sh will show that the Aussie against the dollar, it's a, it's a very, Aussie is very weak and dollar is very strong. And if you were to blindly just sell based on the currency strength meter, right, you will probably get killed on the pullback. Okay, so this is why I said that, you know, never use this to time your entry, just to serve as a filter to know which are the best trending currency pairs right now and which currency pairs are, you know, in a weak trend or range. So that's the first uh, tip to share with you, right? Never use it to time your entries because you can be entering, right, when the market is extremely overbought or oversold. And that's where the pullback is about to, to come. Number two, you can tweak the currency strength meter to your needs. So as, as, as I explained earlier, I use the 15 weeks ROC, which takes into consideration over the last three months of, you know, uh, price change. If you are a shorter term trader, you can use maybe a five weeks ROC, that's possible as well. Or if you're a longer term trader, you can even go up to with the 30 weeks ROC. So the concept here is what matters. There is no such thing as the best look back period. There's no such thing as the best uh, settings for your, uh, for your currency strength meter. It doesn't exist. So you have to know what you're trying to achieve. You have to know, you know, whether you're a long term or short term or medium term trading style, trader, trader, right? Then you can tweak your currency strength meter to your needs. So for me, right, as I've mentioned, right, I trade anywhere between the four hour and the daily time frame. So the 15 weeks ROC suits me well. If you are trading off the weekly time frame, then maybe you can look at the 30 week ROC. Finally, right, this currency strength meter, the concept, okay, we're not talking about specific settings, parameters or whatsoever. I'm talking about the concept, the big picture concept, right, of identifying uh, strong markets and weak markets, right? The concept can be applied to commodities, indices whatsoever. For example, commodities, you can do it with, you know, gold, silver, platinum, palladium. Identify which are the strongest metals at a certain point in time and look to buy the stronger ones. Okay? And for indices, right, you can, you know, do it across the stock markets. Maybe the S&P 500, the Dow, NASDAQ, the China A50, the STI, the Philippine markets. You can do that as well, right? The key thing is that those markets, they have to be in the same sector. Does it make sense? So when I do this across the Forex market, I compare it all against the USD as their base currency because that's a kind of like, they're all within uh, the same sector, right? They're all correlated. So when you do this to commodities, you want to make sure that you're doing it across commodities in the same sector, like metals, gold, silver, copper, whatsoever. When you do it in the stock markets, right? Indices, right? You want to make sure that you're comparing, you know, against maybe like S&P with the Dow, the Nasdaq. You don't want to compare S&P with oil because they're not in the same sector. Get what I mean? Okay? So, uh, with that said, right, if you're, if you're still watching this video and you're enjoying it, right, hit the thumbs up button. If you think this is a, uh, man, doesn't make sense, then subscribe to the channel. This way I can, you know, share with you more good stuff, right, to convince you otherwise. So finally, right, let's do a quick recap, right? Number one, a currency strength meter helps you identify the strongest and weakest currencies out there, right? So this way, right, you can, you know, find out which are the best trending markets and which are the ones in range or weak trend. And usually most currency strength meter right, is based on a percentage change in price over a given period. Some might use more complex formulas, some use simple formula like the one I just shared, but generally that's the concept, the idea behind most currency strength meter out there. And then we talk about how you can use it to identify uh, different types of, you know, market structure, right? And you can trade them accordingly, whether you want to, to uh, ride the trend or just capture a swing. So with that said, right, I hope you know you got value out of this training video. And if you want to learn more about the work that I do, my trading methodologies and stuff like that, then go down to my website. Okay, the link is over here, tradingwithrainer.com. Scroll down a little bit, right? Just scroll down a little bit and you can see this guide over here, the ultimate guide to price action trading, right? So just click this orange button and I'll send it to your email address for free. All right, this guide will share with you how to better time your entries and exits. We talk more about support resistance, candlestick patterns, and much, much more. So go do it right now. Click this orange button 
and I'll send it to your email for free.